Excellent. All right. I'm so excited. So Dr. Jenny, thank you so much for being here. I have just been like waiting to do this. I'm so excited. So for all of you guys out there who have not heard of Dr. Jenny, which I can't even imagine that's the case. Um, Dr. Jenny Susser is uh, probably, I mean, would you say a lifelong equestrian also? Um, uh, fits and spurts, but okay. I, mean, I know you were lover for sure. Okay. And I know you were a professional swimmer and, uh, you know, Olympic trials. And so I feel like you bring such a great mix of having been an athlete yourself and then understanding psychology so great, but have also been in the shoes of the competitors that you, that you have that you help, you know, that it's just this like amazing understanding of people in both sides, you know, like not only what it's like to be in the shoes of the competitors themselves, but also then being a doctor. So we met in 10 years ago, 2010, I think. And do you remember exactly? I mean, I don't know if I messaged you or I don't know that if I saw you in the graduate program maybe I'm trying to think you know usually London Gray is at the center yeah. of of all of my relationships early on so. <laughs> yeah so, I was thinking London too but that might have been yeah I the, think we uh, can blame her dressage for kids I think that's a great idea because she's responsible for a lot of great things and I just love you I you have helped me so much I mean I don't even like I still think of so many things that you have I've heard you talk about I use and I tell everyone my very smart friend Dr. Jenny told me this um so I'm so excited for everybody to get their own you know experience with you too and uh I love it because the name of the um lecture today is how does this thing work or how do I work this thing? And it's the science and systems of energy and performance in the human brain. So I have found Jenny to be this amazing, just to incorporate all those thoughts, not only into my own writing, but also to help my students through performing better, through fear, through like all the things we all come up against, you know, the pressures that we feel um any kind of you know that moment you need more courage which doesn't need to mean i want to canter my horse you know going to that horse show takes courage you know so i've used your words and thoughts and imagery and purple elephant <laughs> oh, see things you don't even remember you told me i'm like Dr. that's Jenny. awesome this is zoom <laughs> blushing by the way <laughs> And this is Zoom excitement, like I can't wait. <laughs> so we'll let you get started and I might pipe pipe in with some questions if uh, I come up. Yeah, I, I think that would be great as you know, as we go. I think you're gonna you're gonna really enjoy that. So over the last decade, um, I've I've been working both in the horse world, uh, in other sports, and also in the corporate world. And some of the stuff that um, I've come across in the corporate world with uh, with regards to research, um, and and the different types of issues that we bump up against. I've really expanded a lot of the work that I've done from pure performance work to a lot of science. Um, and become a little bit of a um, neuroscience and neuropsychology nerd um, because it's been so unbelievably useful. And the more I learn about the human brain, the less I feel like we know how to work this thing. And so that's, um, it's really, it's really why I thought that this title would be, you know, clever, but also maybe resonate with some people because I think yeah we just kind of go along and, and we learn how to do things. And, and sometimes we're thinking about learning and sometimes we're just learning um, a little bit like our horses uh, tend to experience. Um, but what I've found is that this is, to me, the when we start to bring the science into it, and it's so understandable because everybody has one, um, that as you start to understand how it actually works, that it gives you um, a greater facility and, and much more power. And I feel like, 
especially right now, we have so much going on. There's so much going on. Uh, so this is October of 2020, and that you know, for <laughs> for perpetuity, however long this yeah. this video ends up being around, but forever, forever, forever. forever. <laughs> uh, so so it's the 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 amount of things that people have dealt with in 2020 has really been um, not only astounding but disruptive. And I have done this talk so many times this year and with such great response that when you and I started talking about, okay, what can we do to help our community, our dressage community and, and shift some of the culture, that was my thought was, okay, if, if, if we know how to do better by us, then our, our, our performance here improves and then that's when our performance out there improves. Mm -hmm. So the better we do us, the better we do our horses, the better we teach, the better we compete, the, the better our relationships are, just, just things get better. And so that's, that's part of my mission. So um, this is sunrise over my new farm in Ocala. So this is one of the things we're going to talk a lot today about recovery, rest, balance. And, you know, the funny thing about us horse people is that we have so much of this available to us, this beauty. And I think a lot of the times we forget to pay, a, pay attention to it. So I'm going to yeah, give you a brief user manual for your brain. Um, one, of the <laughs> one of the things about change um, is the, the difference between simple and easy. And I think we get confused with that a lot. When someone says something is simple, we collapse it with easy. And a lot of times the simplicity makes us feel like it should be uh, more, or if it's too simple, then we don't think it has great impact. Mm -hmm. But it really does. And some of the things that we're gonna talk about are, are really quite simple. The hard part is making them stick. So to be able to turn that into something usable, we've got to learn. And the key to learning is knowing that you don't know something, <laughs> right? And so we've got to be willing to be wrong or to be un unknowledgeable about something in order to learn. So as you're watching this today, be thinking about, okay, maybe I don't know anything about this and maybe this will help me know more and be able to do better. Um, insights and actions need each other. So, you know, I'm a shrink, although I like to call myself, <laughs> right? I've been doing that for 10 years. And, right, exactly. Right? And uh, so- it's like, the code, it's like the code word. We just put a sports in front of it and then it's just a lot more palatable for all of us. <laughs> highly digestible, yeah. <laughs> so, so I uh, you know, I'm obviously a big fan of insight oriented work, but the thing about insights, and I'll say this a couple of times, is that insights are lovely, but they are a balloon and a hurricane until you tie them down with an action. And so that's where a lot of us miss. We have these great, wonderful uh, insights and we don't know how to turn them into actions. And that's something that I really want people to walk away with today is how to turn some of this into action. Okay, so we're gonna talk about a couple of key things today inside of the brain. Um, energy and balance are going to be the main two pieces, right? So there's a lot more to energy than just if you're tired or not. And most people don't realize that energy has a, has a multi-dimensional um, flavor to it. And when you can begin to tap into the different dimensions, you have ways of, of creating and restoring energy on the fly. And that's something that we all need. I mean, our mm -hmm. culture around horses is work, 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 drink, work, 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 work. <laughs> Coffee, more working. Uh, Coffee, right. Drink coffee, drink wine, drink coffee, drink <laughs> yeah. you know, which is it? Coffee in the morning, wine at night, the gulp. Yeah. Right. So to, to figure out how to um, create a different model of thought for energy, which all lives around the concept of balance. And, um, you know, we've, especially in the corporate world, you hear a lot about work-life balance. We don't even bother in the horse world with that. But no. in the corporate world, we we think about work-life balance, which is a big misnomer. Um, I'd love for us to start to think about this in the horse world, uh, because I believe that the, the lack of balance really shifts our ability to function highly. 
Um, mm -hmm. so we're going to talk about it, not just as a concept, but as a biological imperative, which means that as you fall further and further off balance, your ability to perform, to think, to recover, to sustain health decreases. The less balance you have, the less power you have around so many different systems. And then we'll focus this mainly inside of the brain uh, and always coming back to right, plus action to create change. So this is one of my favorite, favorite slides. And I put this in every single talk and every single deck and every single thing that I do because this is so unbelievably foundational to the human brain, body, mind, body, spirit, all of it. So there's a lot of big words on here, right? So homeostasis is a dynamic balance between the autonomic branches. So basically what we're talking about is something that's called our autonomic nervous system. And so this is our nervous system that controls things other than um, nerve impulses, like you can feel pressure or pain with your finger or, you know, the doctor taps your knee and, and your leg straightens automatically. Really what this is, is this is the balance that we have between these two systems. One's called the sympathetic nervous system and the other is called the parasympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this cute little picture <laughs> on, the, on the red line, right, we have our fight or flight, which is our sympathetic nervous system. And most of us are incredibly familiar with our sympathetic nervous system. Now I have a picture of a T-Rex chasing a person on this. Um, I know uh, we weren't around when there were T-Rexes, but I like the picture of the T-Rex so much better than the saber-toothed tiger. But this is really, the, yeah. this is the essence of our sympathetic nervous system. You've all heard of fight or flight. And our sympathetic nervous system is not something that we have any control over. Once our brain senses threat, our sympathetic nervous system is automatically triggered, right? So these are the autonomic or automatic branches of our energetic systems. So we experience threat and our body changes. So think about what happens to your body when our sympathetic nervous system gets triggered. So your heart rate goes up, your respiratory rate goes up, you sweat, uh, you get tunnel vision, um, the line for the porta potty at a horse show gets really long um, and urgent. <laughs> right? um, thank you for laughing. Yes. <laughs> but these, right? these are things, these, these are not just, oh, you know, I happen to have this weird gastrointestinal disorder at a horse show. This yeah. is because Normal. of our bodily yeah. systems. So, yeah. so, so the, the fight or flight is designed to help us either fight or flight based on what the situation calls for, right? So it mobilizes our physiology immediately through a hormone and chemical release, right? We, we re release norepinephrine, which creates adrenaline and cortisol and all of those things activate and ready the body for this fight or flight in a moment. So our heart rate goes up and our respiratory rate goes up to pump more oxygenated blood to our big muscles, our arms and legs, chest and back for fighting or flighting. Okay, that's the reason why the line at the porta potty gets so long because our blood leaves our organs because we're like, well, I don't really need to be worrying about my organs right now. I need to be worrying about whether or not I can escape T-Rex. So all of these things, all of these systems make a lot of sense. And the cool part about it is as you tune in to this knowledge, you can start to feel this coming ahead of time. You can start to feel your body change. And when you can do that, then you can intervene. And the intervention is our parasympathetic nervous system. So parasympathetic is, you know, the meditation, rest and digest. And parasympathetic nervous system response is governed by something called the vagus nerve which a lot of people have heard about because there's been a lot on the vagus nerve lately. And vagus in Latin means wandering. And when you look at the medical pictures of the vagus nerve, it just, it goes all along the spine and it really wanders all over the place. And what the vagus nerve does is it triggers this calming response. 
So the stronger your vagus nerve, the better you are at calming yourself, right? Our parasympathetic nervous system is designed to balance and return us to this homeostasis. When we've had a shock from our sympathetic nervous system, it's that parasympathetic, that vagus nerve that's supposed to help us balance back out. Mm -hmm. Right. So I love this. I love this picture for a number of reasons. And one of them is the whole teeter totter or seesaw um, yeah. metaphor. Right. So if you if you think about your energy and your balance like a teeter totter seesaw, if you remember what it's like to play on one, there is really no balancing. Right. Yeah. Like you, you and I could weigh exactly the same, but you could have a twin and you could sit on a yeah. seesaw with your twin and it's, there'd still be variation. Motion. Right? Yeah, exactly. So it's, that's where the word dynamic comes into play. Mm -hmm. And that is a big, difficult word for the human brain is the whole dynamic <laughs> element, right? It's sort of like you're riding down the long side and you get your horse in perfect balance. And how long does it yeah. last? Oh God. Yeah. Three seconds. Yeah. Right. And then, yeah. then we lose it. That is the dynamic nature of all living beings. And that is especially the dynamic nature of our energy. And so if you're thinking about your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nature as having this dynamic nature, then it gives you greater power because mm -hmm. what has happened is that our culture has created a sympathetic nervous system exhaustion right? We are constantly yeah. in our sympathetic nervous system. So if you think huh. about how many times a day you experience threat. Now, threat is a big word. And when I right. do my corporate stuff, I make a joke. I'm like, threat used to be a saber toothed tiger in the tree. And now threat is an email with all caps in the subject line. <laughs> Shouty caps. Oh, right, boy. right. And so yeah. and like, like, then the crowd goes wild. But really, we have so much threat all the time, right? Yeah. Your, your main client drives on to your farm and, you know, the dust is spinning. What happens right. to you, right? Well, you and it's like adrenaline exhaustion constantly, exactly. you know, that you're like always putting a fire out of some sort, you know, a text message, like you're saying, like an email, something exactly. happened on Facebook, like, well, you know, someone in person, the horse is running in the paddock, like, it's, it, it, it's like when you really think about it, it's like, it is just absolutely adrenal exhaustion constantly, you know? And I love this also with this teeter totter of like, it gives you permission that it's okay to be fight or flight, you know, because that's also completely normal. And then to be able to like ad admit that that's everyone has that. And then you can, work on the opposite that you never like arrive and then you never get nervous again like olympic riders that are friends you know it's like well, they're nervous too you know because i'm like well, they don't ever get nervous you know and it's oh, like they yeah. do too because the, this is normal human brain that you have one foot on that side of the teeter-totter and the other foot on the other side of the teeter-totter and it's a constant balancing conscientious you know, that it also makes it like doable, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I can kind of combat that systematic, you know, response with yes. these other techniques, you know, which is very liberating, really, <laughs> you know, when you understand it through the science <laughs> of like, okay, it's not that overwhelming, oh, I get scared to do this. And it's like, well, first off our life, we have to conscientiously step into the direction of the rest and digest and the meditative parasympathetic system. And those are skills you're probably going to teach us, you know, because going into the other system is completely normal and actually in our culture all the time, every day, you know? Exactly. See, you always were such a good student that you, you nailed it. That's exactly. <laughs> I, I, I'm taking my notes because <laughs> I am a geek. And, and, that, and that's exactly what it is, right? So the, the sympathetic is so easy because we don't have to create that. 
right? I've yeah. been I've been waiting for a data point, right? This is the nerd. I've been waiting for a data point on how many times a day an average human being experiences mm -hmm. threat. And it's yeah. it's in the hundreds, okay? Wow. When you when you have a full think about it. Just yeah. think about it, right? When you have a yeah. full on cortisol adrenal response, it mm -hmm. takes the body 90 minutes to yeah. recover chemically. Wow. Night, so for 90 minutes, your performance and your ability to have exec, high executive functioning based on <laughs> blood flow in the brain is compromised for 90 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, and wow. this is the crazy part, right? Because our because we our our lives and our culture is so designed around feeding sympathetic nervous system activity that what has happened is our parasympathetic systems have atrophied. Hmm. So people want hmm. to calm down, and they cannot because yeah. they don't have the vagus nerve to stimulate with the strength that they need because they've been imbalanced for so for long. For so long. This right. is like- I see the light bulbs. <laughs> I mean, I cannot tell you how many students and trainers that I mentor that deal with such high levels of yeah. anxiety, just ca can't Absolutely. sleep. And this then is they're dragging the, this during the day. It's like amazing. This is at the oh. source physiologically of, of many of the yes. disruptions in these systems. Now, when a person has been imbalanced for very for a long, long time, that's when you start to have these secondary responses, mm -hmm. right? So 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 diseases of of adrenal exhaustion, the sympathetic nervous system, right? We see them in obesity diabetes yeah. and all of the heart diseases, right? That we have mm. that are crazy off the hook. Mm. Um, yeah. But we also are starting to recognize the impact that the imbalance in the, in the autonomic nervous system has on our mental health. Right? Yeah. Because if you can't calm down your body, you can't calm down your mind. And if you can't calm down your mind, you can't calm down your body. Yeah. So yeah. this is- And then the people get trapped in that. Absolutely. Just and the out. brain loves a good pattern so you get <laughs> stuck in this pattern for a while and it is very difficult not impossible but it is difficult to disrupt and change so this is you know this is at the at the core of of what we want to be thinking about when we're thinking about balance now i'm going to help with the parasympathetic in a couple minutes but i just want to show you this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So if you ever took psychology 101 yes. in college, you probably recognize this. And the reason why I love this is because we are all designed with the order of go from the bottom, the physiological needs to the top. Yeah. Okay. So our, our basic needs, the safety needs, the physiological needs, that's where our sympathetic nervous system is going to rule the day. And with sympathetic nervous system override, anything from you know yellow, blue, or orange is not possible. It's just wow. not possible. If you are in sympathetic nervous system, there is no connectedness, there is no learning. There is no understanding when your sympathetic nervous system is going and saying, I need to survive. I need to survive. Your brain goes, eh, compassion, caring, love, <laughs> generosity, screw that. I need to be able to run. And all of the, all of the brain and the blood flow shifts and none of these things are possible. It's the same in the horse, right? Yeah. 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 Horses don't have the top self-actualization because they don't have the frontal lobe at the, you know, the size that we do right. quite yet, but they have a, they have a middle brain, a limbic system. So they're belonging in a, I'm not so sure about esteem. I'm a little bit on the fence about that, but I think horses do feel a sense of accomplishment when they do good stuff. Yeah. So agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if a horse is in a sympathetic nervous system response, meaning it feels a sense of threat, there's no learning, there's no connection, there's no thinking. Yeah. It is all reaction versus yeah. response. Right. So if you think about our balance, right. And if our teeter totter is imbalanced, 
we're not yeah. making it above our safety needs, which means that our psychology and our spiritual realms are not being tended to or are not even accessible. So, wow. Yeah. And, and when you're <laughs> upset, any type of upset, and I use upset as a very general term, when you're right. upset, it's sympathetic nervous system and, and you know, you're stuck. You're stuck in the lower basic needs, fighting for these things, pretending that you're operating on a psychological level and, and typically you're just not. Yeah. So this, huh. I love this just to, just as a reminder, yeah. right? That we turn into a survival animal under threat. So, yeah. so it's pretty interesting. Hmm. Yep. Okay. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> Shocking. Okay. So now we're going to talk about stress and recovery because this is the model that is the easiest way to talk about creating a balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic. So we're going to talk about stress as if it's our sympathetic nervous system and recovery as if it's our parasympathetic nervous system. Because stress is, like we said, it's everywhere. You know, I could ask a yeah. hundred people and say, um, okay, who feels like they're going to have less stress next week than they have this week? You know, crickets, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No like, one's, it's not, it's just like constant. Even if you're going on vacation, right? How stressful yeah. is vacation? You go on vacation. Well, you're like stressed to leave, but yeah. then it's like, you're stressed about the work that you're not doing you know? Exactly. Yeah. What am I missing? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. uh, uh, about <clears throat> seven or eight years ago, I wrote a program, a resilience program for the corporate training company that I was working for. And I started doing mm -hmm. research on what other resiliency programs were doing. And the thing that made me laugh the hardest was when you'd go and you'd, you'd enter, her, you know, like all this information and get these, these flyers and these beautiful, um, you know, very expensive word documents or PDFs on, on resiliency and they talk about stress reduction and I'd be like you gotta be kidding me like who the heck really is going to build stress reduction into their lives right these are yeah. high performers these are people that want to keep yeah. going and excelling and getting to the next level there's no there's no lack of stress there's no reducing stress in that right the thing yeah. that the high performers get better at is the recovery piece yep Yep. Right. So you yep. get better, you, you get better at adapting to stress. And there's two ways, really the two keys to your stress adaptation, not reduction, but adaptation are one preparing. And you know what a preparation person I am. I am a freak about preparation. Always, always, always prepared. And then recovery, which is something that, that I wasn't working on. I didn't know about when you and I started working back, you know, the mm -hmm. hundred years ago, I mean, 10 years ago. <laughs> So, so the ways that we prepare for stress. So to me, there's, there's a difference in the word preparation versus anticipation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anticipation is, um, is, is a disempowering. It, it's sort of a removed view of what's going on. You anticipate it, but you're not active at all. If you yeah. prepare, you are active. So mm -hmm. I always ask people, what is a day in the life of you, right? You know, a day in the life of you, you know, a week in the life of you, you don't know exactly what's going to happen, but you know, it's Tuesday, the farrier's coming. There's going to yeah. be five things that are going to be stressful with a farrier. I mean, hands down, <laughs> right? We, we know that, right? Yep. Um, you've yep. got a new horse coming in. Now there's going to be 10 yeah. things that are going to be stressful about that, right? Yeah. You've got this many clients, you've got that many lessons, you're preparing for this show, whatever it is, you yeah. pretty much have a good handle on the range. There's, you know, there's a dozen or so consistent stresses across the board with most people that I've talked to. Everybody can pretty much call out between 10 and 15 things that are normal across a day or especially a week. Now, the thing that we do is we know that these things are going to stress us, but we pretend like they're not going to. So we go into this uh, into this little bit of denial, and we're like, "Well, the fair is coming. I'm just going to hope for the best." No, no, do not do that. Do not do that. Do not do that. Fair, right? At least, yeah. At least uh, review in your mind 
the variation of things that could go wrong or could cause stress, including the things that are good stress, right? So yeah. things that are good stress are going to be like having a great lesson with, you know, some, whoever it is that you're training with, mm -hmm. you have a great lesson that's still stressful. It still has a great energetic consummation and cost. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're prepared for it, then, then it takes less away from you because here's what happens. The reason why you want to just be prepared mentally for the stressful events of your life is that a stressful event happens and then you get upset. And then because you weren't prepared for it or you were in denial about it, you not only get upset, but then you get upset that you're upset. Hmm. Yeah. And that is the kiss of death right there, right? Because then you're wasting twice as much energy, right? So uh, it's October 2020. We have the biggest election uh, of probably in the history of our country coming up. And no matter which side of the aisle you are on right now, anytime you open up a news app, a social media app, open the TV, talk to anyone, there's going to be press, <laughs> right? <laughs> And so not only have I put myself on a strict social media diet, but I prepare for it, right? So before I look at the news, because I feel like it's important to be informed, I take some breaths and I'm going to teach you how to do that soon. I take some breaths, I prepare, I sort of level out, you know, okay, there's going to be this type of argument. And then what's that type of argument? How do I balance this out? Right. Take a deep breath. And then I go ahead and I engage. Right. And then I set a timer. <laughs> And then I'm out. And then that's it. <laughs> right. and, then, and then I'm out, right? So it so preparing for stress is really just an acknowledgement, addressing, um, and really thinking, okay, there are things that could go wrong. Um, I'm not creating them, but I'm also not going to be um, denying that they could happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And like, do you call that a little bit like critical thinking? also sure. in a way where it's like the farrier's coming he's got 20 horses to do i'm gonna be busy riding and then like thinking about the outcome what's gonna help me be less stressed would to get someone to come help who, exactly. who's not groom you know what i mean like kind of plan ahead you know and i was laughing to myself while you were saying all that stuff it's like the whole thing of like we don't plan to fail we fail to plan, you know, and it's just like, no one thinks about that. Right. We plan what we're going to do when we go to the horse show, pack all my stuff, get the horse like that. We've planned that. But it's like to even approach your brain as a way of like, I'm going to plan this stress is there. Stress is coming. I need to have a plan. Like even when I get on like a horse that I know is going to be challenging for me and it's maybe been abused or it's lost its confidence and it might it might misbehave not because it's naughty but because it's like it doesn't know what it's the reaction is you know i i always feel like if i have a plan if he goes to do this i can do this if he goes yeah. to do that i can do that but i'm also prepared and i maybe lunge him or i connect with him on the ground and it's like this event that you're planning for and to actually like make stress also like this element that you can approach in that same like thoughtful way i think is going to be like a huge powerful tool to like be able to come against it and not get knocked over by it constantly yeah. exactly exactly you know we've turned stress into this dirty word and and i think we avoid it because of that and it's really yeah or deny that it's there like oh i'm not stressed uh yeah, yeah. you don't sleep at night so clearly <laughs> you, you're stressed you know and then it's like so many people, you know, and uh, better living to chemistry. Like I, that's great. Like do whatever you need to do as part of your own health to take something, see someone, talk to somebody. Like, I think it's also like stress is there and, and anxiety comes from that. And then I thought it was interesting when you said we get upset because we got upset. I mean, how many times do we hear that? You know? Yeah. And then I just, I got really reactive. And then you're like mad you got reactive in the first place. Exactly. You know, and like not having these tools to be like, I'm prepared for these different, str and to think about that, like over a hundred come a day. Right. Like this is a, this is like an exercise of your brain. You have to 
exercise, you know, to be able to handle all this stuff that is coming at you every time you pick up your phone. I mean, it's amazing to really like break it down and think like that. We prepare for so many things with horses yeah. and yet we don't even like help our own brain cope with all, all the things that are happening. It's really fascinating. It, it really is. And, and, and it's just because we're, we're just beginning to understand how this works and, and our culture has been avoid stress. Stress is bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. And deny it. I'm not stressed. Deny it. Yeah. So, okay. So now that everybody's feeling stressed, this is one right. of my favorite, <laughs> favorite breathing exercises it's called box breathing. Have you heard of it? No, but I do do that, but I didn't have a name for it. <laughs> okay. so then, well then, see, you're now even I have more it. brilliant, right? Learned, so this learned, is learned a new, learned a, a new, new term, phrase. right? So yeah. the, the the Navy SEALs use this. I use this. Um, this is one of my favorite exercises. It's it's fantastic for a couple of reasons. Um, one because it's effective, and two because you can do it and nobody can know. Right. Mm -hmm. You can be completely stealthy. You can be having, you know, a little bit of anxiety, feeling some stress, feeling where, you know, it coming, coming down on yeah. you and you can do this and nobody really has to know. So you, it's, it's four seconds for each side of the box. So you breathe in to the count of four, you hold mm -hmm. to the count of four, you breathe out to the count of four, and then you hold again to the count of four. Now, our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous systems are attached to the breathing. So an mm -hmm. inhalation can trigger your sympathetic nervous system, mm -hmm. but an exhalation triggers the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh -huh. So if you think about it, think about when you're watching the Olympics and you know, you're watching yeah, you're like, oh, the yeah. 100 meter dash, what are they doing with their breath? like these big yeah, puffy, yeah. exhale yeah. cheeks, right? Because that is the part of the breath that helps you relax, right? So it's good. Most people, most people breathe in and then yeah. they talk their way through the exhale and they don't really get the full benefit of it because they're not focusing on it. But if you breathe in, hold, and then slowly breathe out and hold, that's where the calm is. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this is, I, I love this exercise. I have a full description of it on my YouTube channel, but this is so easy. All you have to do yeah. is count to four and you can do this all the time. Right. So yeah. I have, I have my women riders who are afraid do this on the mounting block, do this, yeah. before walk off, do this as they're driving up to the bar. Right. Anytime you start to feel any type of tension, this is where you mm -hmm. want to go. Some type of breathing exercise. And as you learn more and more about meditation and breath, it's always the exhalation that is, is either focused on or is longer than the inhalation. And if you suck at this, just keep practicing, you'll get better. Yeah. Right. I use this a lot in my yoga practices and exactly. they were talking about there's this moment when you breathe in that then there's like a little, and for us in dressage, there's a little transition to the, to the hold and yep. then which transitions you into the exhale, which is where you really can like ground down into the center of yourself. Exactly. You know, like I always remember things we talked about even 10 years ago, it was like, when you start to like get up into that sympathetic system, it's like, you're kind of like up, you're getting up out of yourself and you're up into your brain. And then you're just like, wow, you know, and you're, then your horse is also like getting up out of his feet. And then like, everyone's like, wow, you know, and just everyone's up. And then it's like, I have always felt like that exhale is like really grounding for me. And like the hold is like just be in your silence and like just exist and just be and then all of a sudden like the floating crazy just comes back down to the ground you know and then all of a sudden my horse is also heavier in her feet yeah. and i'm in my seat and my leg down you know it's like when we get on and our stirrups feel short you know right. it's like oh who changed my stirrups you know and it's like that's because you're nervous and you're like Ugh. you know you're just putting everything in and like this like stretch out, breathe out, um, is powerful. 
It I, is. And, and the thing that you have to think about or know is that you need to actually train this as a mechanism, right? Because we breathe all the time. And so a lot of people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Breathing too simple to be effective, right? This is <laughs> yeah. Happen, right. But I, I always like to say you walk all the time. Could you go walk, walk a marathon right now? No, no. You'd have to no. train for it. So yeah. if you want your breath, to be a marker for your parasympathetic nervous system and a calming element, you have to train it. Train your brain, say that all the time. All the time. All right, so here we go. Now, recovery. So recovery mm -hmm. is the balancing arm. This is where we stimulate our parasympathetic nervous system. This is where everything happens. This is the restoration, the relief. Um, it's not just recovery, it's rejuvenation, refueling, rebooting, all those words that start with R-E, right? It's the hard part because our culture is so go, 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 go. Yeah. And we don't think- And, and you're weak if you need rest, you know? And exactly. it's like, but actually I will, I will be stronger because I did rest. Yes, and exactly. It's just like, you, you know, know, people who, who don't want to take rest days and don't want to take breaks, their proficiency, efficiency, and performance declines over time. Yeah. Right? You yeah. find, don't take a break all day, but by three o'clock in the afternoon, your brain is you're so dragging. Dizzy, you're not yeah. getting anything done anyway. So go ahead, be a man about it. But um, yes, this is where this is where we stimulate and strengthen our parasympathetic nervous system. This is where we put gas back in the tank, right? We're so yep. good at making withdrawals. Take take money out, take money out, take energy out, take energy out, yeah. take energy out. This is, you have to put it back in. You'd never drive your car without going to the gas station or now with electric cars, plugging it back in, right? It is, yeah. you have yeah. to refuel, right? I call it with my husband, Richard. We talk about it. He's like, oh, are you, um, are you charging? Because it's like, I got to like hook up to the charging station because it's like, Perfect. we we are going, you know what I mean? Now we can't travel as much, but yeah. um, then we got the academy going and then, you know, just, we're, we're just, we're, we, like you said, like high performers are just like, what can I do next? What can I do? And then it's like, it's so important to be like, fuel back up, whatever that looks like for you, figure it out. You know, it doesn't have to be a vacation on the beach which would also be fun but then you're stressed <laughs> out because you're leaving you know so then it's like oh my god i'm gonna be so far away from the horses or wh whatever you know yeah. that it's like you have to find this rhythm inside yourself and figure out what refuels you or recharges you and that's and that's so important and he, there's going to be a variation of different things that are going to recharge and refuel, right? And mm -hmm. so going to the beach for a week, hard to do in the middle of a meeting or, you know, a dressage right. fest. But <laughs> the better you get at recovery, the better and more efficient you get at recovery. So the more huh. you do it, it's just like the breathing. It's just like the walking. It's just like yeah. the riding. It's just like the half pass. The more you do it, the better you get at it. So the interesting thing, um, when I was doing my research for that resiliency program, I came across a um, textbook for um, a graduate level course in physiology, and it was called <laughs> Enhancing Recovery. And I thought, all right, this is great. This is be perfect. And the first line of the book says, I do not believe that there is such a thing as overtraining syndrome. So in sport, mm. overtraining syndrome is something that distance, yeah. distance uh, athletes suffer from. So it's very common in road cyclists, uh, in marathoners, ultra marathoners, and ocean swimmers, right? So they, they can train huh. so much that they call it overtraining sy sy syndrome. And they have blood mm. markers and the whole thing for it. He says, I do not believe there is such a thing as overtraining sy uh, syndrome. I believe there is only a crisis of under recovery. Whoa. That's Whoa. I, I read that and I was like. <sighs> I know. I've got like the chills right now. Holy crap. So recovery 
is elemental. It, this is the piece that when you get good at this, your life takes off, right? Mm -hmm. You get good at this in mind, body, and spirit, and your energy transforms. And so, so recovery has to be, at first you have to force yourself to do it. I had to set alarms. I set a daily chime on my watch to remind me every hour to breathe and recover. So it has to be regular, consistent, repetitively, and it has to be intentional, right? You can sit down on the couch that. and decide that you're going to Netflix and relax, and you can sit there like this, you know, and use your remote, <laughs> and I'm relaxing. I can keep <laughs> me relaxing, right? And get up. I'm and so go, calm. I'm so recovering, right? And so, so the intention has to be there too. And this, the intentionality yeah. part, really creates that relationship with yourself to your calm. Because then you begin to create this, generate this, and call this forth on the spot. I do this with my high performing athletes all the time. The better you are at your day-to-day -day recovery, and, and we get to the point where you are training yourself to be able to do what we call micro bursts of recovery. Mm -hmm. Two quick breaths, right? A shrug of the shoulders, something that triggers, you pair with your longer mm -hmm. recovery systems mm -hmm. so that it triggers that recovery and that boom, that re instant refuel. So that when you get good at recovery, your performance just takes off. It's, it's just crazy. Okay, so we're thinking about recovery. I want you to think about recovery on multiple systems, right? Because we spend energy, not just mm -hmm. physically, right? It is body, mind, and spirit, right? So we think about our, our energy being really as just trapped in our body. And yes, your energetic recovery is kind of, I call it the, the, the quick and dirty energy recovery is in the body, right? Yeah. You want to get yeah. some energy, rest, eat something, drink something, take some deep breaths, move, exercise, sleep, uh, all those things. You, you know, there's always some energy to be um, captured through your physiology for sure. Um, there is a, I just want to point out, there's a difference between movement and exercise. Right, so movement is something that maintains capacity. You do this to increase blood flow, create lymph. Yeah. Your body needs it every 90 minutes. That's how our, the cyclical nature of our body. Mm -hmm. Exercise is something you do to increase capacity. Mm -hmm. Movement mm -hmm. maintains, the less you move, you know, use it or lose it. Exercise, <laughs> exercise is what you do to increase capacity. So those are two different body like systems. That. systems. The mind is both our mental and emotional energy, right? So our mental energy are the things that we can focus on, how clear our mm -hmm. focus is. The more exhausted you are, the more difficult it is to focus, right? The, yeah. the, you just have to have energy to be able to focus. Emotional energy is that, is that positive versus negative. Really, in the emotional realm, we only have two flavors right? It's not Baskin Robbins. There's two flavors. Everything sort of comes from these two. One is love and one is fear, huh. right? So every positive emotion is some derivative of love and every negative emotion is some oh. derivative of fear. And, and I've had people challenge me at dinner parties for hours with all these different <laughs> emotional terms. And I can, yeah. I can take any emotional term and I can trace it Always. back down to fear and survival. Yeah. Without a doubt. Okay, so we're thinking about body, we're thinking about mind. What helps you recover mentally, right? The, the two, one of the, the two quickest things to help us recover in the mind, right, are laughter and music, oh, right? Oh, interesting. Right, so music, it, it, it has this amazing effect on the body, right? So I always think of the movie Flashdance, right? And so for... for People who are young, it's not going to make any sense, but you know, it's the guy sitting like this, right? Watching yeah. her dance, pretending not to care. And then they show, they, they fan down to his foot and his toe is tapping like crazy, right? Yeah. Music, music just has a great impact. So it's very hard to listen to your favorite song and not be impacted by that. That's a quick one. Humor is another quick one, right? <laughs> to, to laugh, to tell a joke, um, that changes your physiology and your chemistry immediately. Um, the other thing that's great for trainers to do is to ask a silly question, 
right? So you have someone that's really stuck, right? They're in their sympathetic nervous system. They can't really get out of it. They're, you know, uh, ask them what color their socks are. Ask them what they ate for breakfast. Ask them what their favorite movie is. That calls blood flow back up to the brain and gets it a little bit out of the stuck parts, the lower parts of the, the survival brain uh, and gets them able to think again. So our spiritual energy, that's that top part, the self-actualization part of yeah. Maslow's pyramid, right? And this is the place where our purpose, our values, our meaning, our connection with others, that's where that lives. And to me, this is like that endless source of energy. When you are connected mm -hmm. to purpose or connected to someone that you love, it's almost like it's limitless, your energy. And it, it can be this amazing source. Uh, and we fail to, in our culture today, and it's becoming more and more profound and more and more talked about, but we, we fail to connect to those values and those purpose meaning points enough because we get swept up in the, in the daily to-dos. So this is just a reminder, right? If, you know, if you're really struggling with something, just try and figure out why the heck you're doing it and what it means to you. And then what that ends up meaning to the people that you care about. Right. Because after all of our, our needs are met, right. You talk about all the things that Maslow talks about after all of our needs are met, human beings need two things. And I've been saying this as long as I can remember relationship and purpose. Right. And our purpose is always about those that we are in relationship with. So this is where you can always, always tap energy and you always need to be restoring energy. So as you're thinking about the, the balancing the energy in and the energy out, be thinking about these different domains, right? Body, mind, and spirit. You put a little energy in your spiritual tank by connecting to your purpose or something that, that triggers what it, your values are, you feel pretty infused and, and, and pretty strong. How are we doing? I love it. I love it. Oh my God. Okay. So, so great. <laughs> so, so this is the system part, and this is where you want to start to think about how to apply this body, mind, and spirit energetically. Mm -hmm. So to me, um, our body is our first tell, mm -hmm. right? So we feel our upset, our sympathetic nervous system in our body first. Now, it's typically a, a, a mental trigger, and you can be triggered either from a memory something that you see or a future event that you're worried about that can trigger all of those all three of those thoughts are strong enough to trigger a sympathetic nervous system response very very easily but what does your body do first right what does your body do so there's three main places where people experience stress head heart and belly and it's really good to know what your part is and then the people that you live with right? So if you're a head person, the moment you feel stress, you'll get a headache. You'll feel pressure in your head. Your neck will get tight. Uh, mm -hmm. Your hand will go to your head, right? So you have those people around you that when they get upset, they go like this, yeah. right? Or start to play with their hair or their words will become about mental strife, right? This is hard to think about. I don't want to think about this. I can't mm -hmm. talk about this, right? It's their mm -hmm. head going, no, I'm out. Can't do it. Yeah, that's head. Heart, people who are heart, they'll get palpitations, fluttering, feels like there's a bird taking off inside your chest or an elephant sitting on top of it. You'll get achy, you'll feel this, you know, like their shoulders start to curve inwards as a protection. Their words will become about pain, right? More emotional hmm. pain. I can't take this. This is too hard for me to feel. Those are people who get stress in the heart area. Belly, which is what I am, is like insta nausea. Mm, so boy, right? The moment yeah. something like I feel it in my belly first, like I'll get a tingling, a nausea, a disruption. I feel like it's doing topsy, my stomach's doing topsy turvies. So the moment, like when my spidey senses go, it's always in my belly, right? So I'll often cross my arms and put them across my belly. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, it's always a, a tolerance or a digestion can't take it in kind of languaging or this huh. makes me sick or, you know, I've got to get rid yeah. of it. So, so which are you? I'm a belly too. You're a belly too. Okay. Now here's yeah. an important question. Let's hope he doesn't mind. Which is Richard? Um, 
I would say probably belly also. Okay. So the, it, it, it's so important to know, right? Because, yeah. right, I'm going to, I'm going to tell on Meta. Meta is head, right? And yeah. So, so, so is Ashley, I think. My, oh, you know, yeah, she always gets a headache. headache and then her neck. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Interesting. So these are good. First I thought things. maybe I was heart, but then I'm like, I don't really feel like, and I think it just kind of comes up from my stomach of like, whoo, my, whoo, I'm feeling tight or like, yeah, you know, yeah, so tingling, flip over tummy. Yeah, the topsy turvies, right? I, oh, right, right. Yeah, it feels like you're on a roller. Where, where is oh. the porta potty? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So after your body reacts, then your mind will typically react with something, right? Either you become hyper focused or you lose your focus altogether. Your attention yep. either goes like narrows down into the weeds where it doesn't need to be, or you lose your attention. You become irritated, right? So for me, I hate to admit this, anger is is like where my me mind. Me too. I'm like irritation, hands down. Me too. <laughs> yep. Right. Right. So, so this is good to know, right? Cause this is where it goes. Yeah. It's going to go body, mind, spirit. By the time you hear yourself saying, you know, who cares or who gives a rat's ass anyway, <laughs> you have, you have been upset for way too long. Right. Yeah. So when your yeah. energy changes, it's going to change your functioning across the board. And this is, you know, as, as I did research and started to put some of this together, this was one of the most powerful things. So if you start to, start to look for this with your students, right? Because mm -hmm. we all have a pattern, right? The body's going to do something. The mind's going to do something. And if you've gotten to the spiritual part or, you know, the, the, yeah. the um, resignation part, it's been going on for way, way too long and you no, no longer need re, uh, recovery. You need rehabilitation. <laughs> right. 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 So these that are funny Go when uh, Katie was doing juniors and, uh, you know, her mom was there and, you know, all of a sudden, like she was getting good and she was becoming successful and then it all meant a little bit more. And then the, the stress comes and I did the exact same thing. So we always laugh. I'm like, I don't know if we're so connected because you're very similar to me or I somehow rubbed off on you that you're like me, <laughs> but like, we would be like so mean to our mothers who are like yeah. driving us around, basically grooming for us like feeding us. I mean, like all the things. And then we'd be like, I said, take off his boots, you know? And it's just like, yo, you little sass pants. Like you, <laughs> you stop that, you know? But it was like total, I, I, and I would call it like, I get sharp, you know, I get, and yeah. that's when I'm feeling nervous. And so if I'm like, and not being prepared, if I get on late, which I, I prepare and that never happens, but like, if something happened that I'm not, <gasps> I'm not, I'm not flipping the stir up. Oh God, you know? I become completely sharp with everyone. I'm irritated, you know, and, and Katie would do the same thing. So Lynn would just like hand me the ring bag and she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to go. Like, Man. she's all yours. Like you just have at it, you know, cause we would just target someone that was just like, you know, like, yeah. right. How is there not a Kleenex in the ring bag? And it's like, you never, ever need a Kleenex ever. Like what, you know, and this is like this irrational irritation of just like, I'm nervous. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So there's, there's two super important parts to this. So the first is the self-awareness around it, right? You get the self-awareness and then you train the mechanisms to help correct your course, mm -hmm. right? As soon as I start to feel it in my belly, I ask myself a couple of questions, you know, like what, why, when, how, where, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I, you know, when I start to, when my belly goes off, I've trained myself to ask those questions. Right. And so there are the, you know, sometimes I can, and sometimes I can't as I, if I miss my body and I get mad or irritated, then I have yeah. to go back and figure out, okay, what happened now? The, the, as you get good at this, one of the best things to do is to have a team, right? So, mm -hmm. so if you have the people in your life and you guys are in agreement and you do this together, there's almost nothing more powerful. Like, you know, mm -hmm. hey, is your belly going funny? JJ, JJ, yeah. your belly off, right? What do we need to do? What is our strategy? And what I can do, yeah. uh, JJ, is I can send you for you to put, um, to add on to this. I have a couple of worksheets 
that just have lists of ways to get recovery in body, mind, and spirit. Uh, and you can cool. post those along with this. Um, I love worksheets. <laughs> I knew that about you somehow. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so the game to play is to start to work this into your daily routines, right? And so we're taking these insights. You've had a lot of insights. Anybody watching this has had, I'm going to guess between three and five insights. That's typically the number that I get. Mm -hmm. So you've had these insights. What I want you to do is write down each insight and then how are you going to tie that balloon down with an action? Okay. So you, you want to learn to check your physiology. So set an alarm. This is the way that I did it. I set an alarm a couple times a day. And then when your alarm goes off, you reflect and say, when was I triggered? What did it feel like? How did I manage it? Right. You also want to be really working on recovery, right? So breathing, moving, yoga, meditation, um, making sure that like I know in the dressage in the horse world, we don't eat, we don't rest, we don't hydrate, you know, all those things are super important, right? Those are the simple ones that aren't always easy. So you can create a culture with that at every barn, right? In my mm -hmm. barn, I have water and I have snacks for my staff. You know, I just do it. They're like, mm -hmm. Jenny and Meta feed us so well, you know, because they perform better. They think better. They perform better. They feel better. They're happier. I'm happier. I mean, come on. It's a win. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to turn recovery and restoring energy into a culture. And when you do that, you feel better, right? When you're in a recovery mode and you've got some gas in the tank, those emotions like generosity, curiosity, yeah kindness, compassion, those are all readily available when you've got gas in the tank. If you're over burned, overburdened, burned out, overwhelmed, yeah. those things you just can't muster. So the simplicity makes it feel like it's not going to work, but it does. It does, it will. Uh, you, you create a system, like you have a system for training your horses and taking care of your horses. Do yeah. the same for yourself. Well, and like, how do we not learn this in school? You know, like I think about, I really think that, I mean, I did a lot of sports, so I, and I, and I love pushing myself and I love now yoga and you and just like, I find this fascinating and I, I love it. Um, but it's like burnout is a real thing along with this anxiety that, you know, everyone can't cope and you know, it all just like feeds in itself in this not great healthy cycle, but then burnout happens and we lose a lot of very talented riders in their twenties where they're like, I'm out. Like, yeah. I need to just go get a real job because I can't take this. And it's like, what, what does that even mean? It's like, this is a dream we get to do every day. Like God bless the universe that we're able to like be with horses all day long. And share insights and learn stuff. And I mean, it, it's amazing, but it's like so many young people are dealing with this crippling anxiety and then they just burn out. And then they come back to me when they're 47 and they're like, had two kids and they're like, Hey, I used to ride. And then you're like, wow, you're really great. Like what happened? And they're like, oh, I was being a working student. I got burned out and I, you know, but there's like all of these things, like, how come we don't, I mean, thank you. Thank you for teaching us. But like, how is this not like, and then you go to math so you can, you know, not be bankrupt in your life and then like learn to cook here, cook. And then it's like, take care of your brain, which yeah. takes care of your whole entire system. You so know, you can function better to be more successful. You know, I do this talk for surgeons for physicians. I've done this. I can't, I work with two different hospital systems and I sit down with these, you know, these orthopedic and brain yeah, and reac surgeons. And I'm people. like, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to tell you about your autonomic nervous system as mine is going bonkers. Right. <laughs> and they're like, huh? And they all say, I knew this, but I never yeah. knew this. Yes. Right. So it's all in the application, right? It's how we decide to adapt it. 
Um, and, you know, performance is such a passion for me. And there were so many things that got in the way of my performance and I, and the way that we're learning about how we work, like someday we'll have a manual, but this is a start, right? This yeah. is, chapter, this Huge is chapter start. One. And so, I really like one of my insights is that like everyone talks about reducing stress, you know, oh, you should get the stress out of your life. And it's like, no, mm -hmm. but it's everywhere and you can't, you can't do that. So we need to like accept that, surround ourselves with love so we can handle what is, like what is happening is our lives are stressful. And that's just what's happening in the world today. And there's no going back. We can't go back. I mean, coronavirus kind of made us all stay home and <laughs> like- Go a little crazy. Slow down. Yeah, slow down. But then we all went crazy because we don't know what to do with ourselves. Right. But it, it is this like, let's build a way to cope yeah and be successful with the way the world is now you know and that's like a really interesting insight of like we can't reduce the stress you know this is just life and so it's like okay how do we react to that um and and prevent the stress getting to us you know i mean it's like always like well great writers uh good writers react and great writers prevent and so it's that like getting up above and ahead of that, like, oh, I'm reacting to him spooking. Well, yeah. why don't you teach him and connect with him in a way that he won't spook? You yeah. know, I'm like, oh, he's bucking. Well, why don't we create a way that you can get ahead of the tightness in his back or whatever he's doing that from check your tack, like get on the other side of that. And I find all the stuff you shared with us today. And I took, a, I took three pages of notes and I can't wait to get copies of the slides and the worksheets <laughs> because that's who I am. <laughs> can't wait, can't wait. You know, but it's like, God, it, it is also really empowering to be able to have tools that it's like life and the stress isn't happening to us. We yeah. can like get up ahead of it and navigate our way and and not deny that it's there it's like it's coming like something stressful is going to happen like figure Be out for it yeah and i and i love that earlier when you said being prepared is different than being um anticipating yeah. because like even when i think about being like prepared like my body stance changes i'm like in my feet i'm like ready but i'm not like it's like someone's gonna throw a ball at me and I'm prepared, I'm ready. I've got my feet, I've got my hands up, like I'm ready. You know, and then it's like, I'm anticipating someone throwing the ball at me. It's like, I'm, I'm backed away and it's coming at me. Oh, you know, it's coming at me, you know? And I just love that choice of words there too. I just, this was awesome. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> you're an easy, you're a good crowd. <laughs> you laugh all my jokes. Time. Exactly. <laughs> Thank awesome. you so much. This was wonderful. My pleasure. My That's pleasure. Wonderful. Um, and I hope I hope everybody out there is gonna take a, as much as I did from this. And we can't wait to hear more and learn more techniques. And I mean, because this this is the real juice. I mean, this is the real stuff. You know, um, this was just wonderful insights. I loved it. <laughs> awesome so thank you thank well, you so much you know much. If people have questions you you figure out a way for us to field them and um and then you know the next step is okay how to how do we get good at this for us and then the next step is how do we take this to our communities yeah and help others yeah yeah and that's also a thing too i remember you told me many 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 a hundred years ago i mean <laughs> 10. um <laughs> Boy, we look good for being a hundred and something. That's right. Looking, looking still young. Um, you were like, if you're in an airplane, you know, whose mask do you put on first? You, yeah. you, you would think like, oh, I'm going to put my kid's mask. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm going to, my, my husband or whoever I love in my life, like, oh, I need to do that. And it's like, put yours on first, put yeah. your mask on first, because if you are not well and whole and healthy, you cannot help other people. Exactly. And when you are more full, you also encourage everyone else to become full. And, yeah. and that's powerful. And then like the greater good gets more fulfilled and full. And then just in general, everyone is like, you know, it's, a, it's an upswing 
for everyone, you know, and yeah, like learn the tools yourself and then you can help other people. I mean, so much, I find it interesting and I'd love to talk more about that sometime <laughs> about what you learned from being an athlete yourself. Sure. You know, you're like, I had a lot of things I worked through and got aware of while I was going to the Olympic selection trial for swimming, you know, and it's like, there's, there's nothing more um, deep and self analyzing than like, going to the tryouts for a giant event that is like all your work, you know, it's like, wow, Th there's so much that's going on, you know, inside yourself and uh, to know that and learn from that and then um, become an expert in dealing with that and then bringing that to everyone else. I remember we talked about Stefan where he was telling me, they were like, how do you always do this? You know, you go in, you're under pressure and you just, you nail it. Like how, how is that possible? And he's like, you know, he kind of went over a couple things he does, but then they, they hooked him up. Um, and so they could take his heart rate and they, they, he was warming up and they like tried to like recreate this stress with a horse. He didn't know he was going to get through the test. He actually lowered his heart rate and started speaking slower because he just like brought his system down and like into center. And I'll never forget him telling me that story. And I'm like, that is a skill we all need to learn, you know, and exactly with your, your box breathing, that's all part of that. And we're all capable of that. Everyone everywhere is capable of learning to like lead themselves in that way. You know, it's, it's amazing. You're amazing. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, JJ. I think you're Thank quite you. amazing too. It's always, Thank always, you. always awesome to talk with you. Um, and i um, awesome. glad to be part of, uh, part of this mission with you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Jenny. You're the best. <laughs>